This is Street Chance on SLBN TV. Another moment to share together is here before us. I am pretty happy to welcome you to our show, Street Chance on SWCN TV. My name, of course, remains Comfort Isaac. And guess what? My co host, Abbasio Fon Timothy, had just returned from his official trip. Welcome, Abbasio Fon, to the show today. And how was your trip? Yeah, it was fine. I was actually expecting that you were going to chide me for keeping you alone on the show. But thank God that didn't happen. So, yeah, we thank God. And thanks to the Holy Spirit. Um, it's actually good to have you. And trust, I trust God you had fun. Yes, of course I did. All right. Welcome, brother. Now, feminine and lack can cause a lot of havoc. Many marriages are broken because of lack. And in the Bible, everyone reminds it. Do you know their wife saying, for the sisters, all to lack at the various times? How about the Israelites? They had the oracles of God. And to whom pretend the adoption had to relocate to Egypt because of women and lack. Now me, that's the husband. I had two sons while trying to survive in the strange land. And in the New Testament church, they contributed and gathered together resources to Jews to the brethren who were in need for the infirmary and lack, you know, during the great persecution of Brussels. And we understand that female and lack being the sign of the end time are uh, here with us today. We went to the streets to find out in the midst of this feminine and lack. If you have a cup of Gary, will you or will you not do it to anyone asking help of you? Now, the responses are quite interesting and thought provoking. Join us as we watch together. Actually, I think this is the period or this is the season where God wanted to demonstrate who He is. He is a giver. So I think at this moment he wants you to show that giving spirit that you sing. Give and it shall be given unto you in thousands and so on. So if in my own place now, talking by to myself, I think I'll give. Because this moment, um, we all tend to understand everyone. Because, you know, if I don't give, what does it profit me? If my own fellow person is hungry and I have. It's, it's better understood if I don't have. But if I have just one cup of Gary, I think I'll share with my own so that we both can benefit and we have fulfilled God which say when you give it shall be given unto you so I can give the last and I know for sure that he will give me my daily bread the next day uh, as a here and a doer of the word I have no other choice so I'll share yeah, I'll share because I have no other choice I mean it's my own way of showing who I am because we're like God right and God is selfless so we have to be God is kind, so be kind. So that's it. Yes, I'll share. So first of all, God is a kind God, and as a Christian, I know that God was instructed to be selfless, to love, to share. So demonstrating that as a Christian, it has not to be just my words, but my actions. So I have to express that. Um, uh, um, a cup of Gary now is two hundred naira. <sighs> that's a very tough question, though. I think I will do, but I will make mine a bit um, higher than my friend. After all, we are showing kindness, you know. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I will try. I will try my best, but I will not be. I will not go hungry. I, I share everything I have. I understand the fact that I'm not even supposed to live life for myself. My life is too so small for me to finish one cup of curry for myself. You get? <laughs> so I have to. I have to share. God commands it. I have to share, and. Um, I cannot live life alone. Okay, you, we are friends, so what 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 makes a friend is when you share. You understand? I don't know when I might need you. I don't know when you might need me. So I need to always share to keep the the friendship. I would share. It's being kind. I mean, kindness is everything. So I would share. I'll gladly share. Yeah, because um, I'm actually a selfless person because I believe that. If I'm hungry, someone else is hungry. So if it's biting, it's biting the person. So the way I feel the same way the person feels. So why wouldn't I want to share what I have to um, alleviate the person's suffering? I'm actually a nurse. So I'm just trained to care and to share. A sonship, it plays so much. When, remember the scripture that said, when men shall say, they say, casting down. What do you say? You said, they say, lift it up. So if you have a one cup of Gary, 
you are bound to share it with people around you. People come around you, you share it. You know, that doesn't want it makes you to become selfish, be self-centered. Because you know you are the one who made provision. The great provider is there. He's always more provision. He work in the way beyond your comprehension. That is one thing I know. So I don't move by what circumstances are wrong. People are complaining. For. I remember some days back, I sent my daughter to get Gary 500 for three of us in the house. They sent three cops. But that was okay, okay for us. For now, I have confidence that anybody that comes around me seeking help, as long as I have it, we share it together. You know, if you consider what is happening around, the first question to go with the flu is to say yes. So the answer would be yes, but you know, it's a very funny thing. We are in a very trying time and um, for you to even be able to um, help others, you have to be, to be alive to help. So yes, I will help, but <laughs> I'll have to survive and then reach out to, <laughs> to others. So yes, um, it's a very trying time. It's, it's, it's um, the only way you can actually reflect or exhibit what God has done in our lives is to share. And sharing is not just in the act of giving, it's the act of how you think. You are thinking will now reflect, will now be exhibited by the things you do, which is the giving. So yes, I will give. Yes, I will, because sharing is caring, so why won't I? Because we, if you say you love someone, you have to show them how you love them. So sharing your cup of Gary is one way to show this love. And this is the season where Jesus died for us, so why not? I will share my cup of Gary. I will definitely share because everyone is going through hard times and it's also good to share, so I would share just that. I would. <laughs> As you can see, we are in the church, but I won't lie, I will share. I have, I have every chances of lying, but there's nothing there because everything about church is all about generosity. Just be kind to people. That's just it. Try as much as possible to be kind. Even if it's your last, sometimes that your last and still open doors for you. That's all. Why not? When you're talking about uh, there's a there's a certain level, whatever is happening is something we are aware, something we know that definitely will come. Because it's in the scripture. The Bible makes us understand that there will be a time like this, which is a farming period like that. Uh, but it's also a way of you as a child of God will believe in God because it's, you're not permitted, or let me say, it's not permitted to happen to everybody there. Where Even though when we're in farming, there are some persons that are not going to wallow in the situation there. God always has a way of providing for us. Why not? If I have, why can't I share with somebody, irrespective of uh, what's happening there? Because if it's by my strength, or well, either by whatever I do, a lot of persons that even work harder than me can't even have what I'm having. So definitely I share, irrespective of, because we are children of God, I'm a child of God and we have been taught how to share. Thanks for staying with us. And for Stefan, to give birth to what was set on the streets, what do we have as our guest today? Okay, uh, we have as our guest today someone we would describe as a mother in Israel, a former Cross River State gubernatorial candidate and accomplished attorney, a seasoned minister of the gospel with a global mandate. A UK based sister and the founder of D. Ima Nsa Adekuke Foundation, TINAF. Ima Nsa Adekuke. Glad to have you here on the program. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it does appear there is so much lack and hunger in the land and in the body. Can you see this is true of where you are based? Well, I, I think um, the lack and hunger is worldwide. It's mm -hmm. not just in one place. You will be surprised as to the amount of uh, mm. lack in the United Kingdom. People are much more going to food banks now. Um, churches have had to do much more for the parishioners. So it's worldwide. I know that the Nigerian situation is a little bit intense because of bad governance. But um, it's worldwide, trust me, it's worldwide. Okay, yeah, okay, but so what would you say about the famine and lack of people these days? 
uh, well, if you look at it from a spiritual context, the truth is that it's going to get worse. Mm. Um, so it's only um, scripture being fulfilled. You know, science and everything that man has can only go towards the fulfillment of scriptures. Because the Bible says in the last days, there'll be famine, there'll be wars, there'll be rumors of wars, there'll be pestilences. So um, when you look at that, you can only say this is exactly what the scriptures have foretold. I think that the, the facts or what we should be looking at is how do we um, get ourselves ready for the situation that will actually get worse? What should the church be doing? How should we be positioning ourselves and what should we be thinking? I think this is what uh, I think we should be looking at right now. Okay, right. So how possible is it to give and share with others at times like this? Uh, at times like this is actually tough. Yeah. But you know, these are the times that God really tests those who who trust in him. Because, you know, you must be willing to give, like the widow, your last might. And that's the truth. Because when you do that, when I do that, what we're saying is, Lord, if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to give what I have to those who I know are in need. That is when we ask, look, I, I was listening to a message a few days ago, and he talked about the sacrifice. You know, we've made so much uh uh, noise about sacrifice being money, being literal things, but that's not it. Sacrifice truly is obedience. That if you look at what Abraham gave, it wasn't it wasn't so much his son. It was the fact that he obeyed in the face of pain, in the face of not knowing what would come out of what he was doing. This is where we must come to as a people, the people of God. We must come to that place where we say, Lord, I've just got 10,000 naira in my purse, but I'm going to give it and I'm going to share it with those who do not have. And I think this, this famine is for the church. Remember, there was famine in the land, even in the early church. Agabus came and prophesied that there'll be famine. And what the church in, uh, was it uh, in Macedonia or wherever, you know, one of those Gentile cities, they gathered together and sent to Jerusalem because the famine came to pass. This is what is happening. Nigeria is not going to come out of this thing. We have to begin to farm as brethren. I remember Brother Seth prophesied this many, many years ago, at least 20 years ago. You know, and you know, how many of us really did anything about it? It's going to get worse, so we better get ready. Um, These are very interesting question, now. In the early church, it was recorded that there was no lack among them. How can we solve this problem of lack among believers? I would first of all say that we need more of the Holy Spirit. The reality is that we are too selfish as a people, as a church. We are still very much unbroken. The number of broken believers, the number of believers that are willing to go hungry so that their brethren can feed are very few. And if you if you look at the early church, before they said they had everything in common, you would see that they said they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they you know went from house to house breaking bread. I know amongst us we have spiritualized breaking bread. We, and that's an aspect. The word of God is threefold. You have the natural aspect or the literal aspect. You have the spiritual aspect and you have the fullness of it. So now, fine, we can say the early church had the natural aspect by going from house, little house to house, breaking little bread. And so we come in as the church, the latter church, and we're doing the spiritual aspect of it. And we are... Um, sort of, uh, you know, breaking bread, spiritual bread. So as I was saying, the, the church, 
that we are currently, we, we have spiritualized the issue of having all things common. You know, we want to share the word of God. We say it's the bread of life, and that's true. We we forget about the bread of the belly. Whereas on the other side, there are those who have made so much about the bread of the belly being the word of life. So we, the Lord, by his spirit, is bringing us to the place of fullness where both the spirit and the literal will become one in the body of Christ. And this is where those of us who give ourselves and yield ourselves to the Lord to be broken by him will have to play an important role. That means we're going to, like Barnabas, bring our natural thing and lay it at the feet of the brethren. I'm not talking about what is happening in Pentecost now. Some people will say, well, you know, you have to bring it to the state's man and then he will bless you and then he swallows it all up. He doesn't remember the poor. That's not what we're talking about. There's a fullness that God is bringing. And even now, it shall be. Okay, so having considered that um, you have a cup of gari, or perhaps rice, um, regarding where you're based, we are really not give out to help others, asking you for help. We are in their need now, and why? Um, if, if you're asking me as a person, I think a lot of yeah. people who really know me know by his grace that that's not, that's not a problem for me to do at all <laughs> because uh, of the way the Lord brought me up as a Christian. You know, my formative years in him were principled and based on on um, First Kings chapter 18, you know, the widow and Elijah. So, uh, I have three main scriptures that the Lord gave me at, that founded my Christianity. One is a first Kings 13, the young prophet and the old prophet. The second one is about Elijah and the widow. Give me first. And then the third one is Isaiah 58. How, you know, we break the back of wickedness by the things we do by the good works we do. So um, when you have those foundations as, as a young believer, being able to give give what you, you have, whether it's the last thing you have is not a problem, you know, because you've come to understand that it's about him. He's the one who provides. When he says to you, give, it means that he already has an answer that what you give is not going to run dry. It's not going to run out. You're not going to beg bread. You're not going to, you know, uh, put your hand to steal because he's the one who is in, who is your defense. So for me, if that question is directed to me as a person, it's it's not a it's not an issue at all by his grace. Uh, but it takes someone who has been instructed by the Lord. It takes someone who has sat at his feet and received personally these same revelations I'm telling you about. So for me, if they are foundational tripod, a foundational tripod on which my Christianity rests. So um, it's unshakable. So you, you need your word. Each Christian needs his word to be able to, to be able to give of themselves the way that these end times will require. Okay. <laughs> so um, okay. this is very dicey. Are there any spiritual or other implications of giving out the only thing, like the only cup of rice or gari, to others at a time like this? Um, you can be sure that there will always be a blessing. But you know, like uh, a brother said, when you decide to do something, there's a blessing, but it's not a hundredfold blessing. But when you decide to obey, what God tells you to do, then there's a hundredfold blessing. You know, so in these times, the scripture must become real to us. James says, what's the point? A man comes in at his home and he said, don't worry, brother, the Lord bless you. The Lord will provide. It is well with you. You know, we have all these cliches. Mm -hmm. Instead of just putting your hand in your pocket or bringing out your last gallery, I say, brother, look, this is the last one in the house. Let's stay. When I say you give it all, you better share. You know, your position is better than the other person. 
and that's where and i think that's where we should be interesting ma so what's the span of scriptures on giving the only thing that you have yeah the, uh, the start of scriptures as i know it is that god needs to demand it okay many times we want to give to god what he didn't what he didn't demand i speak from personal experience you know there's you know sometimes you hear oh you know somebody gives 90% of his of his income and he leaves or 10% it's good to desire these things. And there I was, you know, this particular time in my life, desiring to do that. The Lord, I need to give you 90% and give another 10% of my income. And I tried it, I think, for one or two months. And I found out that it was a struggle. I found that I didn't have the grace. And I found out that it was not God that asked me to. So giving the only thing you have has to start from God. There must be a clear word from the Lord. And it, it, it cannot be a matter of deception. Like someone would say, when God said to Abraham, give me, you know, take thy only son. You know, take thy son. Mm-hmm. First of all, you know, somebody was talking about how the Jewish people interpreted this thing. Whenever they put commas, every, you know, wherever you see commas in the Bible, you know, the Jewish people um, say that it, there's a conversation going on. So it's like, okay, the Lord says, take thy son. And Abraham says, okay, I have two sons, you know, in his mind or something. Then he says, thy only son. But I have two sons that Ishmael and I who thou lovest. Mm-hmm. Said, but I love them both, you know. Isaac. So God now comes down, now he's down to Isaac. You know, so at that point, there's no mistake, you know. So, mm-hmm. so what am I saying? When God wants the only thing you've got, he knows how to ask it of you. I'll give you my personal experience. There was a time in Lagos as a young Christian. I went to a ministry, a visiting minister from the UK. He used to write every day with Jesus. I don't know whether Brother Nathan remembers this, but every day with Jesus, he was a daily, a daily uh, scripture guy. Really great. Uh, I, I've forgotten his name right now. But he came to Lagos and I went there. And when he he was supposed to minister for two or three days, and on the second day he said, tomorrow we're going to take an offering and come prepared with what you want to do to the Lord because I don't believe in emotional things. So you have to settle it with the Lord. And there I was. I had basically just eight naira at that time. Yes, I had a car, but I had only eight naira at my first. And I said I was going to give God everything that I had. But then I had this set of bangles, gold bangles that my mother had given to me. Three of them. And, it's, you know, ironically, the previous day on Friday, my younger sister, who used to work in a papa at the time, came back and said, I'm a female. Can you imagine? I saw this uh, bangle so at uh, this uh, place, and look at how much they cost. Just one, only one, and those were small. And the amount of money she called just blew my mind. I said, "What? These bangles? Because they were solid, twenty-four carat gold bangles." And so, and I always used to wear them. I always had them. You know, having a bag, whatever it was, I always had them. I not give them to. So I drive up to this meeting. And of course, it's coming. I had made up my mind I was going to give God all I had, which was eight naira in my whole world at the time. And so the envelope is coming. All the people are coming. And I hear, put the bangles in an envelope. I said, what? What, what? Remember, I don't found the price of one. <laughs> and he said, put the bangles in the offering bag. Hey! And I went, I went, because I did not see myself without my gold bangles. I cried and cried in that place. And the offering bag was coming closer and closer and closer. And so I brought up my envelope. Because that is how much the Lord had dealt with me. I brought up my envelope. I brought up the two bangles. I put them inside. And I wrote a note. I said, I don't know what you will do with this. But as Swiss watch 
a sweet shop in a papa, this bangles cost this amount of money, you know. And after writing it down, I put my eight naira. I said, Lord, you didn't ask me for the eight naira, but I'm going to give this to you as a mm. seal of my offering. So it has to be God. It has to be God. And it will be clear. So, so it, it, it's, it's anything outside of God, anything outside of the Holy Spirit, you will struggle and you will not be able to make it. So that's all I can say. I can only speak from personal experience. It has to be God. Okay, finally on this. What would be your counsel to those who are in need and to others who have in abundance? I I, I don't know what you mean by abundance. The truth is that no matter how much you have, you still have things. That's the truth. Um, and no matter how much you think you are in need, you still have something you can give. And that's the truth. Because you may think you need money or you need food or you need a house. Yet deposited within you are wells of wisdom and counsel and, you know, discernment and giftings that you can give to someone. So it, 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 nobody that is an appendix, even the appendix in the body still has a function. Everyone has something that they can give. So when you say those in need and those who are having abundance, mm -hmm. it, it depends on your description. What am I what do I have in abundance? Because our understanding is always focused on money, food, mm -hmm. as the things that are of the in need, maybe, or you know, or in abundance. Wisdom can be in abundance. And then the person may laugh. Did you not read the scripture? A wise man that delivered the whole city, even though they didn't remember him. But it was, it was his wisdom that he gave what he had to deliver the city. So many times we, we, need, to, we need to have a paradigm shift in our thinking. Because we always limit God's movement by narrowing him down to naira and cobble, pounds and pennies, dollars and cents food, you know, gary or potatoes and all that. That's, that's not the God we serve. Those things are, you know, they, they are the, how would I call it, the resting you of a life that has first been given to him. So whether you are rich or whether you are poor, in terms of material things, my counsel will be, first give of yourself to the Lord. When you give yourself fully, when I give myself fully, nothing. In fact, that is when the Lord will open your eyes to see what you have inside you. That is when wisdom will come to know what to say. The woman that went to the prophet Elijah and said, oh, my husband was a debtor. His creditors have come. She was in need in her own mind. But the prophet said, what do you have in your house? She said, oh, only this, only this cruise of oil. So why it was just, you know, just, you know, just anything. Just, just dash me now. Just, just leave me. Is it just? The time just was what the prophet used to bring her out of that. And what was the trick? Give to others. Pour it into other vessels. Go and borrow vessels and fill them up. And as you fill them up, life. Abundance, restoration, unlimited access to whatever you need will come to you. So what do you have in your house? Whether you, you call yourself needy or you call yourself abundant, what do you have? Find out what you have and give it to the Lord and let the Lord multiply. Well. Thank you, dear sister Emma Adekuke, for your kind presence on our program and for your very candid contributions. Hoping you will not hesitate to grant us another opportunity of having you and your views on our program. Street Chats. It's been, it's been an honor and a privilege to speak with you. And uh, I hope, I, hope I, I was able to say the right things the Lord wanted me to say. Love you all. Have a blessed time.
All right, we appreciate you immensely for your sincere answers to our questions. We would so hope to call upon you again to shed more light and give your views on issues that brought up for next time. Thank you, Ma. Dear viewer, let's hope you enjoyed this program, Street Chance. Let's keep it here next to this channel. Until then, the blessed now and always. We have been Abasi Ofon Timothy and Comfort Isaac. Thank you for watching. This is SWB and TV. Do like, share, subscribe, and comment for our channel. Goodbye.